Okay, so what I've done so far is I've written some cues down on the paper for myself, which uh, you have two minutes to do. And I've washed my hands. I've organized my supplies that I'm going to need for the assessment. I've raised the bed to a good working height. And now I'm going to start the first phase of the assessment with my patient. So hello, my name is Kelly. I'm a student nurse. I'm going to be doing an assessment today. Did I get your name? It's Jenna. Jenna? Okay. And Jenna, um, do you know where you are right now? I'm in Sudbury, Ontario at the hospital. Okay. And do you know what day it is today? It would be February 22nd. Perfect. 2013. Okay. And when's your birthday, Jenna? June 14th, 1992. Okay. That's good. And I'm going to ask you some questions today. What, like what brought you in here? Okay. So, can you tell me what, what's going on with your health? Terrible, terrible headache. All the time. Okay. And what provokes the headache? Um, lights, anything really. It's pretty much all the time. Okay. And if I had to, you had to describe the quality of the pain, what would you say? Is it a throbbing pain? Like a throbbing, yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. And is it localized in your head? Or right in the front, always. Okay, so you don't have pain reading anywhere else? You don't feel it in your jaw? or No, not really. Not? Just there? Just there. Okay. And on a scale of 1 to 10, how bad would you say that the pain is? When it happens, it's like an 8. An 8. Yeah. Okay. And is it, you said it happens every day? It's, it's like a constant, like it's, it's always there really. It's really bad when I wake up in the morning, but other than that, it's usually like a constant throughout the day. Okay, it happens, so it happens all day. And is there anything that makes it better? It takes a lot of Tylenol. Oh, do you? Okay. And what do you, if I had to ask you, like, what do you think the pain comes from? Well, I got in a car accident a couple months ago, and ever since then, I hit my head really hard, and ever since then, the headaches just nonstop. Okay. And when you get the headaches, do you get any associated symptoms? Do you feel tired? Do you feel nauseous? Kind of makes me nauseous. Makes you nauseous? Okay. Perfect. Um, I'm just going to ask you um, a couple other questions. Um, in the past 24 hours, can you tell me what you've eaten? Um, it's really early in the morning. I only had breakfast. I had a bagel this morning. And then last night, I didn't really eat. The headache kind of made it worse. And uh, for dinner, I had uh, I had some soup, and I had a grilled cheese sandwich. Okay. And I'm going to ask you now four words, They're just random words. And at some per, um, point in the future, I'm going to ask you to call these words. Okay. So the four words are apple, banana, motorcycle, Okay. Okay? Alright, so well, I'm going to ask you some questions about your previous health history. Okay. So I know that you told me since the car accident that you've had these headaches. Um, before the car accident, did you have any dizziness, vertigo? No, not really. Have you ever had seizures? No. Did you suffer from frequent headaches before the accident? If I did, it was maybe once a month. Okay. And have you ever had meningitis? No. Encephalitis? No. You've never suffered a stroke? No. Okay. And are you on any medications besides the Tylenol you take for the headaches? Um, I'm on birth control. Other than that, no, just like when I'm in pain, I take the Tylenol. Okay. And do you have any allergies? Not that I know of, no. Okay. And um, as far as your family health history, is there any neurological problems in your family? Uh, my grandpa died of a stroke. Uh, there's no mental illnesses that I know about. That's probably the only thing. Okay. The stroke. The stroke and the stroke in your family, and there's no cardiac problems? No. And anything else that you think? No. Okay, perfect. And um, as far as your activities of daily living, do you find that the headaches keep you from...? Uh, to be honest, when I get them, I just want to stay in bed all day. Okay. And I'm not really doing any of my housework. I'm not really engaging in anything. I'm tired all the time. Okay, so I'm preventing you from going to work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, have you ever worked at a job where you might have been um, exposed to environmental hazards? No. Toxic chemicals. No, no. Okay. And do you have? What's your regular diet? Are you really, really healthy with your diet? Uh, you? I could be better, but for the most part, I don't eat junk food every day. But and do you exercise regularly? Uh, probably could exercise more too, but so we'll say the maybe headaches probably week. keep you. From yeah. Yeah. As as you okay. And do you take any other drugs like no. any illegal substances, no. marijuana? No. Nope. So now, normally during an assessment, you would take the vital signs. However, I've been provided with all of her vital signs, and they're all within normal limits. So I'm going not to go into do this part of the assessment. Um, the mental status assessment encompasses her appearance, her behavior, her cognition, 
Um, so I've been able to accumulate a lot of that information just with taking the health history. I can see that, well, she's in bed, but her posture is good. She's not slouching. Um, when she came in, she's in a hospital gown now, but when she came in, I assessed her appearance to make sure that her she was age appropriate in dress and that she's well groomed. So that was all fine. Uh, her gait walking in was normal. She was coordinated. Um, she's talking to me fine. Her facial expressions are all good. Um, her speech is good. She's not slurring her speech. Um, her She's answering consistent questions. Her mood and affect match what she's saying. So I've assessed that, that all. Um, her cognitive function, I've orientated her so she knew where she was. So she's orientated times three. She knew who she was, where she was, and what day it was. Um, she's following along for my questions. Her attention span, she's not being distracted easily. So she's got good attention span. Um, I tested her re recent memory with a 24 hour diet recall, so that was good. Um, I tested her remote memory with asking her when her birthday was, and she was able to tell me that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask her to recite the four words back to me. Um, Jenna, do you remember the four words that I gave you when I asked you to remember? Uh, they were apple, banana, motorcycle, and night. Perfect. So now I've tested her recent memory, and it's good. So uh, the next part is the thought processes, and as I've talked along with her, I've realized that she is um, coherent. Her thought processes, they're well formed. So, and I don't believe she has any suicidal thoughts. If I did think that she looked depressed, I might want to dwell more onto that, but she looks like she's fine. Um, the headaches are disturbing her ADLs, but they're not making her to the point where she's depressed. So that's, I've considered that her thought processes are all intact. So now we're moving on to the actual testing of the 12 cranial nerves. So the first cranial nerve that we're going to check is the olfactory nerve. And so what we're going to do is we're going to just look at her and just make sure that her nerves are symmetrical and that there's nothing on the face that you can tell with the olfactory that is uncommon. And then we're going to test patency. So we're just going to occlude one nostril and can you sniff Jenna? the other side, sniff again. So now we know her nerves are patent. So then we're going to test her sense of smell. So we're going to take it, we're, will you close your eyes for me? You're going to take a familiar object, or familiar scent, sorry, and you're going to have her smell. Can you sniff? Can you tell me what that smells like? Like oranges. Okay. And you're going to use a different scent for the other side. Can you sniff again? That one smells like coffee. Okay. So her sense of smell is intact. Um, if she couldn't smell them, um, if she could smell, couldn't smell them both on, like bilaterally, it would call, be called anosmia. If she could smell from one and not the other, it's considered neuro neurogenic anosmia, and that's a problem. Um, if she couldn't smell from one nose, it would just, it could mean that she had rhinitis or um, sinusitis, something normal, but um, both um, one side and not the other is abnormal. Cranial number two is the optic nerve, which is, of course, her eyes. Um, at this point, if I was doing an actual assessment, I would do a Snellen test and a mini Snellen. So for the Snellen, you have her stand um, 20 feet from an eye chart, and you want her to be wearing her corrective lenses if she has any or not, and she should be able to read 20-20 from 20 feet. Um, then you do a mini Snellen, which you hold up closer to her face. Then you want to test, um, do a confrontation test. So what you're going to do is you're going to have Jenna, can you just close yeah, up one of your eyes? And you're going to, um, you're going to close the same one as well. This is a peripheral vision test. Okay. So can you tell me when you see my fingers come into view? Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Okay. So what you want um, is you want you heard to see them at the same time that you saw them, assuming that your peripheral vision is normal. And she did, so that's all normal. And then we're going to take the ophthalmoscope. And what we're going to be looking at now is her optic disc and her ocular fundus. So you want to be on the same side as the eye that you're seeing. And start off down here. So what you want to be looking at is the back of the eye. You want to focus the red light on the back of the eye to see her optic disc. Normally, it should be yellowish to orange. It should be round, oval, and it should have clearly disseminated edges. So everything is fine in this case. 
And then you would do, of course, the other eye on the other side. The next nerves um, are grouped together, the cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6, which are the ocular, motor, trochlear, and abducens nerves. For these, you want to check her palpable fissures on both sides to make sure that they're even. If she has any drooping, it's called ptosis, and you want to document if it's equal in both eyes or if it's off to one side. You're going to check her pupillary, pupillary reflex with a pen light. You want to make sure that they're equal, that they're reactive to light, which they both are. And then now we're going to check her, her positions of gaze. So could you look at my finger? And now you're going to follow it. So what you're looking for here is that both eyes should follow the finger at the same time. Um, and you're also checking for nystagmus, which is an involuntary twitching of the eyes, um, which should not be seen. So you want to document if that's seen. And there's also, um, a, if a deviated gaze or if there's limited movement, it's called strabismus. And that's an abnormal, um, something to document as well. It should not be there. Yeah, um, cranial nerve number five, with this, which is the trigeminal nerve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, can you clench your jaw for me? Yep. Okay. You're going to put your fingers on masseter and the temporal muscles. And you're going to ask her just to clench like she was chewing. And again, you're testing for symmetry. And that's fine. This is testing the motor part of the trigeminal. So can you clench? And I'm going to try to pull your... So you press on the chin and try to attempt to pull their teeth apart, which you should not be able to do. So that's the motor part of the trigeminal nerve. Then you're going to test the sensory. So I'm going to have you close your eyes. I'm going to touch spots on your face. Can you just tell me when you can feel them? Yeah. 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 So you're going to test three spots. You're going to test mid-brow. You're going to test under the eye and the cheek, and you're going to test the chin. And this tests three nerves, which are the ophthalmic, the maxillary, and the mandibular nerves. And she can feel them all. That's my also, in the, this is a test that would be done. Um, you can ask your instructor if they want you to do it. I'll just describe it. Um, can you look straight ahead for me? What you want to do with the cotton whisk is you want to touch the cornea of the eye, which I'm not going to do. But what would happen is she should blink unilaterally when one of the cornea is touched. It's a little bit of an invasive test. But you want to do it if you suspect that there's anything that's abnormal. Um, cradle nerve number seven is the facial nerve. So now we're going to test facial movements. So could you smile for me? Could you raise your eyebrows and frown? Okay. So what you're looking for now is you're looking for symmetry of movement. Um, that you're looking for any drooping, any possible paralysis, anything that might be abnormal there. But we saw everything was pretty symmetrical and normal, so we're okay with that. We want to now do a taste test. So can you close your eyes for me? Can you stick out your tongue? So you would take a familiar taste. Can you tell me what that tastes like? Sweet. Okay. Then you would take another taste. In a different part of the tongue. Can you tell me what that tastes like? So. Okay. So that determines that her sense of taste is intact. Um, next, the cranial nerve number eight is the acoustic nerve. So the, we're going to do um, a variety of hearing tests. So we've already determined that her hearing is good just in normal voice because she's answered all my questions. She hasn't asked me to repeat myself. Um, so now we're going to do something called a Weber test. You would take a tuning fork and you're going to put it middle, midway on the head. Can you hear that in same in both ears? Yeah. Okay. These are two, uh, two conductive tests. And you're going to put it on the mastoid process. Can you tell me you stop hearing that? Yeah. Then you're going to move it to in front of the ear. Can you tell me you can stop? I can't hear it anymore. Yeah. So the, the, that's the rind test, and she should hear it twice as long in front of her ear than she did when it was pressed on her mastoid process. She did. Now we're going to do something called a whisper voice test. So what you want to do is you want to test one ear at a time. So you want to include this ear. So you're going to put your finger on her tragus and you're just going to vibrate, just to keep 
whisper from hearing from that ear, and in this ear you're going to whisper. You should use a common word, something that's two syllables. Could you tell me what I said? Tuesday. Okay, perfect. So those three tests are all normal. Uh, cranial nerves number 9 and 10 are the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerves. So we're going to test these. We're going to, can you stick out your tongue? Can you say ah? Uh. So what you want to do is you want to look at her uvula and assess that it's midline and when she says ah that it goes up properly like it should, which it did. Um, you would also do a, um, a taste test at the back one third of the tongue if you suspected anything. It's a hard test so it's not normally done and it's just difficult to determine. And throughout this process I've been assessing her voice, she's been answering questions, so I've noted that there's no um, brassiness in her voice, there's no uh, nasal sounds to her voice, or her voice isn't strained, she's been able to talk to me without having to use a lot of extra effort, so all of those things are fine. So that nerve is intact. Uh, cranial nerve number 11 is a spinal accessory nerve, so what we want to do is we want to just test for symmetry, so we're going to put our hands on our sternomastoid muscle, and just check that they're both equal size. Can you sit up for me? Yeah. And we're going to check her trapezius muscles. Again, just assessing for symmetry and size. You would note if there's any irregularities there. Now we're going to test the strength. So you hold your hand on one side. Can you turn against my hand? You're trying to keep her from turning against resistance, so she's fine on that side. So the strength is equal bilaterally as well. Then you're going to hold down her shoulders. Can you shrug for me? And again, you're just testing for symmetry when she shrugs to make sure that the muscles are both equal by laterally. Now the last nerve is the cranial nerve number 12, which is the hypoglossal nerve. So what you want to do is you want to ask, can you stick your tongue out? So when she sticks her tongue, it should be forward thrust and should be symmetrical, which it is. And can you say three words for me? Light, light, tight, tight, and dynamite. dynamite. So when she says these words to me, the L, the D, and the T should all be clear and distinct. And they are, so we're establishing that that nerve is intact. So now at the end, what you can do to retest her remote memory is, can you repeat the words, the four words that I said to you before? Can you repeat them to yeah. me? Um, apple, banana, motorcycle, and mate. Perfect. So now what you would do is you would take any abnormal findings and you would document them and then report them to the proctor.